This is Wake Up Tanks from Cloud Gaming, here with some intermediate clashing. So today I want to talk about anti-air in general. Um, you're going to see three different anti-air games. So here I'm starting out. Um, you know, I like to just drop archers in the back if I've got nothing else going on. Bank a little bit of elixir, I see the lava hound, and immediately my blood runs cold. Luckily it's only level 2 lava hound. Um, so I shuffle my skeletons out and try to support an attack on the right to make him spend some elixir. And then I just, you know, hope that my archer on the left can, can knock down that... Uh, that lava hound a little bit. It's important to to counterattack the other lane if you can, so that they don't build a humongous push. Once you see that lava hound in the back, you want to make sure that you can try to counter uh, counter push the other lane, or not counter push, I guess, but just push the other lane. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm trying to make sure that I'm not getting uh, not letting him get too much of an elixir advantage or getting too much elixir storage. I just don't want him to have enough elixir to get the lava hound and the balloon, which I, I'm assuming is in there once I've seen his other cards. Playing pretty carefully. Uh, you'll notice that I'm slightly up on elixir. Floated for a second, but I shouldn't have done that. And here comes the next lava hound. So. Um, you see me doing almost an identical play, shuffling the skeletons out and running the hog, but I've got the ice spirit coming on the left. Now the ice spirit's going to serve to slow down the lava hound push, which is not necessarily a good thing, because that means he can link it up with the balloon, but I did want to get everything pumped together for a fireball, that can just do a little bit of damage, and then his, his nice surprise is this clone spell, and oh my gosh, I've not messed with this for a while. Um, now this is the kind of party trick that it's really only available once. Um, I should have fireballed that and then tanked some of the some of the right hand tower uh, with that archer or with skellies or anything. But I mean, still, still worked out okay. All right, so we're slightly up, but definitely in danger of just getting crushed into bits. So again. Look how I pull the cannon over. He really should have had the balloon a little bit further over to the side, so maybe I think it's still a little aggro to the cannon. But uh, now I'm just uh, trying to take care of these air troops with my archers and trying to aggro with the skellies in the night, and I'm lucky enough to pull it off before he can finish me off. So that's uh, some anti lava loon. And lava loon is just that's 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 my worst man. So I was pretty proud of that. So this next one, you're gonna see me go up against uh, balloon freeze. And balloon freeze has has uh, you've probably seen some YouTube videos about balloon freeze recently. Um, so I start out with the pig push, and then I see the freeze. And I think that's a bizarre, um, you know, with a spell like Freeze, you want it to be a surprise. You, you don't want to pull that out unless you absolutely have to. Um, distract the Knight a little bit. Nothing crazy. Uh, you're going to see me fireball this Musketeer. Again, you know, this is something I like to do when I'm high on Elixir. Okay, now I know he's running Balloon Freeze, so look at where I place my cannon. I try to place the- oop, that was a little close. I try to place the cannon so I can't- he can't freeze both my tower and the cannon at the same time. Now, that seems a little funny because the cannon can't hit the balloon, but the cannon can hit ground troops that could distract my archers. So, um, now that I know what he's running, uh, I have a, a pretty good picture of, of the strategy I need to employ. So. I need to make sure that when he runs his balloon, he can't freeze my tower and my cannon and my archers. So a rookie move would be to drop the cannon so that it lures, you know, maximally to the middle but close enough that you can still freeze. 
and then drop the archers in a safe spot in between from oncoming attackers, but then he freezes all, for, all three. So, um, again, fireball the musk, just because why not? Ice Spirit getting damage on the tower, that's kind of nice. Okay, now, you see me log the musk just so he doesn't have support uh, to take out my cannon early. You see the cannon over to the side so that it can't be frozen along with uh, along with my tower. Since it was so far away, he didn't even go for it, which was wise. It would have been silly for him to freeze that. So he has enough um, elixir to defend my hog adequately. I have to distract everything. Again, pull over with the cannon. And here's my mistake. Uh, no, not this one. A little bit you're going to see me misplay my archers. And it makes this battle a lot more interesting. Spoiler alert. Okay. So you can see he's actually got a little bit of a push built up. Um, and... He's got a huge elixir advantage on me. I'm kind of grasping at straws here, trying to trying to finish off this tower, and I get a little greedy. I think I think we all tend to get greedy when we're so close to winning, but I get too greedy here. And then I started playing sloppily. There, those archers. Look at what he notices. He can freeze the archers and the tower. No anti-air. I drop a pretty limp fireball. Barely get that cannon down in time to distract the musk, or that would have been game. And the ice spirit, of course, in there, the ice spirit saves the day. So, luckily, I was far enough ahead that one mistake wasn't enough to kill me. But, um, you always want to make sure that you've got your anti air troops, or an anti attacker troops, however, however they're attacking, spread enough that they can't all be frozen at once. So, if it's hog freeze, you want to make sure that you don't have your, um, your attackers close enough to the tower that they can get knocked out. Balloon freeze, you want to make sure that your attackers aren't close enough to get uh, frozen, etc. Okay, and this is just kind of some fun, because the you know the, the 2v2 thing is on right now, and this was just kind of a fun match. <laughs> so, since the, the theme of today is anti-air, you can bet that they're going to have a relatively air-themed deck that we're going against. Alright, now this tornado was just not quite enough to take out my princess, so we get a nice big push on the left, and here's the, the Lava Hound. Icky. He's ignoring the princess on the right hand side, which I think is a horrible idea. And I don't know why, why they chose not to answer the princess. But man, uh, I am so happy to have the witch and the princess going against those lava pups. With that splash damage, you saw they all took a little damage as they came out. Um, kind of a strange light in there. So, you know, honestly, I just... Put this in here because I thought it was fun. This isn't super educational. Oh, how I love rocketing things unnecessarily. That was a pretty good fireball. I love those tornado fireball combos. Still was not enough to stop our hog, but you know. Okay, so. Distract the minions. Have another fire spirit running around. Tink! There's a little bit of damage. Okay, and here it is. The full-on lava loon attack. And I'm feeling pretty cocky at this point. And of course, what happens when I'm cocky? I misplay. Lava loon attack gets in. Does damage. Oh no. Now it's a two tower game. So we have to actually work for this win. We're, we're taking some serious heat here, um, but you, you can see that we're not in too much trouble. I'm 
good times. Goblin Barrel distracts the Executioner enough. The Hog gets in some quality swings, and we can Rocket Fireball for the win. Just uh, all around having fun today with these uh, anti-air decks, or with these anti-air matches. I, I've, I've really enjoyed the uh, the event, the, the 2v2 event. I, I, I always have fun with that. Thanks for watching.